recording. There it is. You can't miss it. Um, <laughs> the recording is for the purposes of those people who can't make the meeting tonight, uh, uh, who just want to pick up on any of the information and the contacts, et cetera, et cetera, that come through this meeting. So that's why we've got the recording going. So welcome, everybody. Good to have you all here. And um, maybe I could just start with a little introduction of myself. Um, who am I? How did I get into the room, et cetera? Um, just to say that this event's obviously been convened by Wellington Shire Council with uh, support from uh, Bushfire Recovery Victoria and a number of state agencies and organisations who you can see on your screen. Um, and we'll get to see uh, those organisations. We'll drop their names at the very minimum in the chat, but um, I'll go through them as well. Um, so my name is Steve Ray. I'm from an organisation called the Group Work Centre. And um, <clears throat> basically I've been asked here to facilitate this session as a kind of an impartial voice, just to help ensure that as many of you from the community are able to contribute as possible, just to do the kind of, you know, directing of traffic, you might say. So that's really my role today. I'm not really involved in the content per se, but uh, just to make sure that we use the space well, we really hear each other, <clears throat> we go through the agenda on time, et cetera, et cetera. And of course that means that everybody who has some skin in the game can, can um, you know, participate fully in that. Don't have to worry about all the process and so on. So um, maybe the first thing to do before we get into formality is just some very brief housekeeping uh, in this online space of Zoom. Now, probably most of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, um, then it might be good just to familiarise yourself with the mics. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see uh, down the left hand, you've got a capacity to mute there. Uh, it's probably good to have your mute on, particularly if you've got background noise, unless you're otherwise speaking. Um, you can turn your video on and off. It'd be great if you could have your video on, unless you've got connectivity issues. Um, if you're very shy, of course, you can have it off. There's no, there's no uh, requirement to have it on. It's just that when we're in this online space, it's already a bit of a challenge to get connection. So it's lovely to see people's faces if you can do it. Um, and then uh, other little things uh, across here, probably the most important um, box down the bottom there is the one that says reactions. <clears throat> if you click on that box, you'll see at the bottom there's a raise hand function. That would be really handy when we get to the point of people wanting to ask questions or say anything to actually use that because what happens then is you go up into the top left of the total screen, we get to see you, we won't miss you and I'll be able to make sure that um, you know we, we go through this in an organised way. So um, what else do I need to say about that? Oh, yeah, This is quite important because if you actually look at the screen now, there's like <clears throat> I don't know, 25, 20, 25 um, little boxes there. And if you're often in this space, this online space, it can be a bit draining. Just we call it the Zoom trance, you know, just seeing all these sea of faces, the massive Brady Bunch um, <laughs> experience. If you go into the top right of the total screen, you'll see a little button there that says view. And if you click on view, you can move between what is this, the gallery space, if you're in that, or you can go to speaker. And when it goes to speaker, you'll see the other participants at the top, but one person will come into focus, usually the person who is speaking. So that can be quite handy when someone is speaking and, and um, you know, maybe doing some uh, introduction of themselves or whatever. It's just good to be able to see the person more closely again greater connection and, and uh, so forth. All right, um, that's probably enough uh, in terms of the online, the use of the online technology. <clears throat> I guess as far as using this space goes, just being aware of the fact that there's a number of us here and if we can just be aware of that uh, and use the airspace in a way that makes sure that a number of people are as, you know, as many people who would like to speak get that opportunity. Um, so, yeah, just an awareness of that would be good. So the priority tonight is to make sure we hear from, um, you know, you in the community uh, today, the people who really were closest to this issue uh, and what's going on 
uh, during the time uh, since the huge event, you know, the storm event back in June the 9th and all the things that happened as part of that, the uprooting of trees, the flooding, all the things that you've experienced and all the consequential things that have come from that, including driveway slipping away and land disappearing and bridges almost collapsing, whatever it has been, but there's been a huge toll, obviously. So we really would like to hear from you uh, in this space, your people closest to the action. Um, before we do anything more, though, and to really uh, now get past that housekeeping, I'd like to formally pass to the, um, the Mayor of Wellington Shire Council. Um, and there he is, Councillor Gary Stevens. Welcome, Mayor. And over to you for a formal welcome. Yes, thank you very much, Steve. Look, I'd just like to thank everyone who was joining us this evening, um, particularly uh, of course, my uh, council colleagues and the staff of the Wellington Shire who, um, who have done a huge amount of work since the, this um, event, this uh, emergency event. I'd also like to um, thank um, Bushfire Recovery Victoria for joining us and, and all the other government agencies that are involved um, for their, as you said, Steve, there's a list of all of those people. So we, I thank them all for their, for their attendance and their um, help and assistance with what we're trying to do here, which is obviously recover um, from the event. And and my other, you'll be pleased to know I only have one other formal duty and then I will mute myself. And um, that is to do the um, welcome to country. So I just like to acknowledge the, uh, the traditional custodians of the land, um, particularly the Gunai Kurnai people, of course, which is the, um, the land on which the Wellington Shire um, is located and uh, acknowledge their um, elders past and present. And uh, yes, and also obviously all the other um, traditional owners of wherever you may be coming from this evening. So thank you, Steve, and um, I'll pass back to you. Thank you. Many thanks, um, yeah, and uh, thank you for that acknowledgement too. And yeah, in this online space, it's fascinating, isn't it? We're coming from so many different uh, lands, so it's um, a great thing to acknowledge all of those different places where we're coming from. All this bit of, you know, by thinking and reflective music. Um, <laughs> this is this is why it's sometimes helpful to mute in situations like this. Um, so the purpose of tonight's meeting is really kind of threefold. Uh, we want to obviously provide you, the community, with an update of what's occurred since uh, the June 19 storm event, and there's a number of different organisations going to help with that, and principally to hear from you, the community, about your experience and your recovery needs. Um, and perhaps, you know, towards the end there, there's, a, there's a, a third point about the reminder of this being really an initial conversation, and the next steps are to discuss how you want to engage with all these bodies who are here today uh, and your recovery needs going forward. So there's a bit of, um, you know, update. There's a bit of uh, investigation into what's gone on, things that haven't gone well. We definitely want to hear about those kind of things because that is going to really help in terms of strategic uh, direction. Um, so um, it's just <laughs> probably just to say too that it's possible that you might have some questions that won't be answered, that we don't have answers for, that the people here don't have answers for tonight. Uh, but if there isn't an answer, there will be a quick follow-up to find out what that answer will be, you know, so um, it's as swift as possible. And as I said, it's the start of a process uh, so we can really get to the bottom of what's not gone well, if that hasn't been your experience and why that is. Um, and perhaps it's, important to name up front that it's like three months now since the storm it's a long time that's passed and uh i think it's fair to say that council and all the organizations here are acutely aware of that and the limited resources of council in dealing with the immediate aftermath of the event in addition to tackling COVID, etc cetera, etc cetera, they're just two of the big pressures that have really fed in where we've got our um the focus now, however, is to get on with it and to do the best job possible going forward and to work out uh, what your needs are. Um, there, as I mentioned, there are a huge number of organisations here 
and they're here to be uh, of help in the event that you ask questions that go to particular agencies who are responsible for you know, different aspects. So I'm just wondering if it's possible, uh, and there they are. Look, you know, Cassie just so on the ball. The, <laughs> the names of the organisations have already been put into the chat. Um, so if you have a look at them there, everything um, from bushfire recovery, obviously, council, the SES, and then there's a whole host of organisations there, Ambulance Victoria, West Gippsland CMA, Parks Victoria, Department of Families, Fairness and Housing, Agriculture Victoria, the Red Cross, Telstra, Ausnet, Uniting, uh, National Broadcast Network and Victorian Council of Churches. It's a huge lineup of people here who can, um, can be here to support you if needed. <clears throat> so, um, and there's a little reminder there about being on mute if you can. Um, what else do I need to say? Maybe just to give a quick, uh, because we're going to hear from some people in a moment. So just a quick overview of the agenda, how that's going to work. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, the Emergency Management Commissioner, Andrew Crisp, who will give us um, five minutes of his time talking about some of the response and recovery uh, changes that are happening. Uh, Carmel Flynn, who's the executive of uh, BRV, will also speak in terms of BRV's role and why they're here today. And then we will hear uh, from uh, the SES, who will give us a debrief of the storm event. And it's probably worthwhile noting that, you know, it could be confronting for some of you who've really experienced some pretty serious, um, you know, impacts. Any kind of trauma that has been experienced as part of this, that could be revisited as part of the, um, the presentation, just to be aware of that, really. Uh, then we'll hear an update from uh, Council, from um, uh, Sam Matthews, who's the Acting Manager of Recovery and Emergencies, um, and, or the Municipal Recovery Manager, I believe, is more accurate. And then we're going to hear from you. So there's a few people to get through, just in terms of getting context, framing the night, but we'll get to you as quickly as possible. Um, and then we'll get into some of the... Uh, the way the steps going forward before we finish at 7.25. So uh, although it seems like a long time that we're going to get to you, it won't be that long because what we'd love to hear are some, you know, anybody who would like to actually, um, you know, introduce themselves from the community. Uh, that would be a, a lovely thing to hear. So is there anyone who would like to just say, Hi, we've got, you know, some time for that. Where you're, we did some informal introductions before, but is there anybody there who would like to just say, I'm from, you know, wherever you're from and why you're here tonight? It'd be lovely to, to hear your voice. Yes, and, and please raise your hand if you can. That'd be terrific. Charlie, Charlie Cousin, thank you. Welcome. It's actually it's actually Tom cousin, but um, my son's name's in the in it. But I don't know why, but anyway, it happens. <laughs> Kids, that. yeah, exactly. Um, my main concern is the new footpath that has been put in um, along the Sea Spray Road. Thanks to the Shire for putting it in. Um, it's a good footpath. However, we have no drainage um, along the the. Um, it's on a highway, but um, I don't know if I can. Can you flip your camera? You can, there's a little button you can hit and it does a flip a room. Oh, yes, sweet. You done it. So, um, coming down from the Longford shop, you'll see that there's no drainage on this side mm. of the road. It's all on that side. Um, so it almost hits the road coming out from all the dams mm. that are still overflowing. Um, and it was actually over all this footpath and stuff only yesterday. Um, so it's mainly just after a contact name mm. on who we could... Um, yeah, I suppose get some trenching done or something like that. Brilliant, Tom. That's exactly the kind of practical on-ground stuff that we want. And thanks for the introduction. Good to good to have you here and for that um, that piece of intel. I saw people writing furiously there. So we'll see who can reply to that later on. Anyone else from the community like to just say hi? 
Yes, uh, Rowena. Yes, oh. Rowena Myers. Yes, um, yes from, from Karajung Lower, on our farm property, we have uh, two kilometres of Reedy Creek frontage goes through our property. Um, and uh, we just spent a lot of money um, about 10 or 15 years ago, I guess, fencing both sides of that creek and revegetating with some um, assistance from the Catchment Management Authority at the time. Um, just a couple of things I, I wanted to talk about. Um, we, we've actually had two one in a hundred year floods this year. Mm -hmm. So we had massive floods um, on Reedy Creek in and the property in um, March. Mm -hmm. There's about 24th or 23rd, mm -hmm. 24th or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So they were massive. They flooded the creek flooded. They took out a lot of our fencing along the creek as well as gates and posts, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, a massive amount of damage. Mm -hmm. um, some of that we had repaired when we got hit by the, the June floods and that took um, a lot more again. So some of the same bits we'd repaired are gone and, and yeah. So after the June floods, uh, we counted there were, there were, well, we stopped counting at 50 trees that had come down along the creek line and caused damage to fences, 50 trees. So any, um, and any um, fencing gates, um, posts, whatever that you find down at Woodside Beach, they're ours. So, yeah. um, but also, I also wanted to talk about um, a different sort of um, matter in terms of road drainage, because our, our property slopes steeply from the creek up to Butner Saddle Road, which is a gravel road, um, a narrow gravel road that forms our northern, the northern boundary of our property. Um, a landslide washed away uh, during the last, during the June floods, washed away part of that road not adjacent to our property, um, but um, I, the, the, the Shire has done some work on culverts and um, drainage since then, but it seems to me that all the drainage from the massive hill above that road, the massive area of that of, and, and the flows is just being dumped on our property and causing a lot mm. of damage. Mm. Wow, Rowena, that I can just hear the, the frustration that that must have been. Yeah. Uh, those two things that you're talking about are just huge in themselves. And look, um, thank you for, um, you know, kind of framing your introduction with that. Uh, we will come back and, you know, find some people who can talk to those issues hopefully and find out what the next steps might be to, to support you in that but um yeah thank you so much for being here today it's uh it's thank really you. great to have that wow any anyone else from the community and yeah look as you introduce yourself uh, i see patrick you've got your hand up have you would you like to feel free to to kind of announce yourself in terms of your experience as well that's totally fine we will get to that of course later but that is uh absolutely fine to to talk about whatever has happened for you. Patrick, uh, you might need to unmute. You're still on mute. Yeah, there you go. Am I okay now? You're done, well done. Uh, uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, my name's Patrick Hanrahan. We live in uh, Tyra Valley. We have about a kilometre of uh, river frontage on the Tyra River. One side, the uh, Tyra Valley Road runs up one side, then there's a the river and then to get access to our property, you have to uh, cross the river with a bridge. As Rowena said, there's been two major 100 year events this year in March and June. And on both occasions, our bridge was taken out, mainly due to logs coming down the river, mm -hmm. um, which build up against our bridge like a beaver's dam. Mm -hmm. And of course the water on, on the first occasion, it couldn't go over the top of the logs on top of the bridge, it had to go around. 
so damage the approaches on either side of the bridge. And that happened on the second flight event as well. And on both occasions, our, our bridge was taken out. Uh, full marks to the council uh, who repaired the bridge quite promptly on both occasions. And we, we are very, very appreciative of that. Um, the two issues, of course, on the first occasion, there were three semi-trailers of logs taken off the bridge and that were wedged up against the bridge. On top of that, there were five semi-trailers of logs between the bridge towards the entrance to our property. So it just gives you an idea of the scale of what came down the river. Yeah. Uh, we're downstream from uh, where most probably there, there's one or two big roads bridges further up, but our bridge seems to cop it a lot. But when you look at all those logs, strangely enough, they, they're all they've all been cut. <laughs> and and my concern is that if there's a tree crashes down on Tara Valley Road, uh, the contractors push the the logs into the river, and of course, on the other side of the river, it's all all the frontages leased by property owners, and of course, a lot of those trees and logs end up in the river, and I'm just wondering. You know, what can be done, uh, you know, to stop that? Because we're copying it, uh, we're downstream of where the problem is, if you see what I mean. So I don't think anybody's here from the department, but I just wanted to register that. We still have okay. a clean-up to do on our driveways and yards, but that's another matter, okay? Thanks so much, Patrick. Um, and we will come back to that question uh, from experts who can and hopefully uh, give you some answers about you know what can be done about that thank you the, com the complexity of this and one of the reasons why there are so many agencies here is because of the different land ownership and responsibilities from different agencies so um yep. one of the great things is having um brv involved in this they're kind of the glue in it all bringing together these uh, different agencies so that you know there can be a coordinated response so thank you very much for that um this is really wonderful to hear these um these introductions with some specific examples. Anyone else from the community who would like to uh, introduce themselves and yeah, anything you've got to, to share? Uh, yes, Rain, is it? Uh, yep, that's me. Welcome, Rain. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm up in uh, Karajung, up in Karajung Township. Um, I was uh, evacuated for probably about three weeks. So first of all, thank you very much to BRV and to um, Leah Hepworth's office. They helped get me back in my house. Um, we had a lot, a lot of trees come down here and power lines and we're out, out without power for a very long time. But um, we've sort of sorted most of all that out now, except for some dodgy phone reception. And uh, the thing that I'm worried about at the moment is all of the trees we've still got down around the property and all of the cleanup that we've got to do now, which mm. is, well, I guess in a few months we'll be coming up to fire season, which is yeah. what's worrying me at the moment. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Makes sense. And um, it has come up a number of times with other uh, community meetings, so you're certainly not alone with that. So that's that question has been noted, and we will come back to it uh, later on and hopefully get some, some answers for you. Um, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Oh, it's a couple of questions. One from uh, the Mayor, uh, Gary Stevens. Would you like to say something? Briefly. Oh, yep. briefly uh, thank you, Steve. Just because rain came on, um, it's interesting because I was almost going to raise that. I did hear a, I did hear a report that rain had a big problem with a tree that um, was was not. No one would take any, or no one, no one felt capable of helping remove this tree. And the tree, I understood, was dangerously hanging over your house, Rain. And then I heard, I also heard there was a huge cost um, for a contractor to come and remove it. And I'm, I was just sort of concerned to know, did you get a positive outcome? What happened there? Um, yeah, yeah, we did. Um, I'm fairly sure um, Bushfire, Bushfire Recovery Victoria got onto that and we had some help from the, um, the local army as well. Um, so yeah, oh. they got all down safely, but unfortunately it's sort of a big on the ground mess rather yes. than... Yes. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question too. And so the immediate danger is gone, but the, the bushfire one remains. So, or the potential for uh, a bushfire um, threat, at least there. So thanks, Rain, and thanks, uh, uh, Mayor. Uh, Cathy. Hi, I'm just, um, I'll just try to put my Where camera are you coming on. from, Cathy? Um, so I'm from uh, Sea Spray Road behind, directly behind the general store. Wonderful, welcome. And, um, thank you. Thanks for having this. This is much appreciated. So we um, we had help from the SES um, when the rain started from sale and they were fantastic um, because we got all the water from every neighbour behind us and every dam come into our property and just about flooded our house. Luckily, they saved the water coming in. Um, but we just seem to have had a bit of a, a stop since then of getting any help or support. I did ring the Wellington Shire support page and um, they said they weren't sure whether they could help me and to send them some photos and they would send me an email and they didn't. Right. Um, so it's just since then, since we've had rain, inundated with rain, mm. we just keep getting more rain in our backyard and everything yeah. so be nice but, to get some support yes must be very frustrating particularly with all the rain um thanks kathy we'll get to that um question that specific issue that you're talking about there um this is great anybody else who's got who would like to introduce themselves from the community Don't worry, there'll be another opportunity. We um, uh, so it's just very appreciated to to have your voices in here early. Let's um, let's keep moving so that we can come back to these issues and uh, work out what can be done about the specific issues. And uh, as we uh, kind of work into the more strategic long term as well, um, we're going to hear from. Uh, from Carmel Flynn from uh, BRV next. Uh, I'm not sure that Andrew's here yet. So maybe would you like to, to jump yeah. in Carmel and give some context? Wonderful. Happy to jump in, Steve. And um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. And thanks, um, Mayor, for your uh, warm words as well. And um, also want to acknowledge the the great efforts of both council staff and also of the community themselves for all the work that you've done over the past months to help uh, clean up both your own properties. And I know lots of community members have got in and helped neighbours and friends and, and family. And I know that council has been working tirelessly um, over the last months. So I want to acknowledge that. Um, Andrew has sent me a message, Andrew Crisp has sent me a message to say, I'm really trying to get to this meeting tonight. Um, I've, I'm just needing to juggle a number of things. So if he's able to join us at all, I know I know he'd love to be here. And um, and when he does, we'll, we might just flip to him to um, so that you know he can I guess provide some of his perspectives as well as the commissioner for emergency management. He oversees the whole emergency management system, and with a particular you know interest, um, especially in the, those early those early days and weeks um, during the response area. But he also has a responsibility for recovery coordination and he has delegated to Bushfire Recovery Victoria um, at my organisation the responsibility to, um, to coordinate recovery. So, so what does that mean and who, who are BRV? So I'll be really brief, but basically we're a state agency. We're part of the emergency management system. Um, we were stood up after the 2019-20 bushfires to provide support to bushfire affected communities um, and we continue to work with bushfire affected communities and their local governments in East Gippsland, Taowong and Alpine Shires especially. Um, but when this um, massive event, uh, this storm and floods event happened across the state, um, our, our acting Premier Molino at that point um, asked uh, for BRV to also um, as, as a, a state agency responsible for recovery coordination to provide these additional supports to storm and flood affected communities and their councils. Um, there are a multitude of agencies that operate in, in recovery following uh, major, major emergencies. So of course, 
recovery um, at the local level is the responsibility of councils. But when councils look into state government and see and see who can, you know, where do some of the challenging questions and issues go to, there are the more than 50 agencies that have recovery responsibility. So VRV's role is to, um, on behalf of all of the, the regional and state agencies, um, support communities and council to sort of be the lead coordinator and navigator um, to bring together agencies, especially that might need to come together to solve problems that are arising in the recovery journeys of, of communities. Um, we're certainly here um, standing side by side um, in support of Wellington Shire Council to listen to communities, to understand your recovery needs um, uh, now and going into the months ahead because this is likely to be a, a long-term recovery um, journey and, and to, to do our absolute best to advocate your, your priorities into state government. I, I report directly to the Minister for Emergency Services, Jacqueline Symes, um, to highlight what are the, you know, what are still the needs and the priorities of communities. And, and, and that then helps um, my minister and, and cabinet um, make decisions on, you know, on more supports that might be, might be needed by communities. So thanks for having, having me here tonight. Oh, I should also say we are also leading the state coordinated cleanup program with our partners, John Ling's group. So I know we've got some boots on the ground with our contractor cleaning up at the moment um, in, in Gippsland and we're leading that process too. So we're, uh, I'd like to introduce my regional director, uh, Kane Trist is here tonight too. So he's um, he's across a lot more of the detail in Wellington Shire that, that, than I am. And I'm sort of across what happens in, in Spring Street and some of the policy questions that you'll put to me tonight. Um, Kane is, is sort of more across the, um, the detail of, of what's happening for you. So we will tag team as appropriate tonight to, um, to you know, to to discuss with you your your concerns as well as of course all of the other agencies who are here. So again, um, thanks for having me. We may not have all the answers for you tonight, but I assure you we'll be listening really closely to be able to take um, back into government um, what those needs uh, still are. Thank you. Back to you, Steve. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks for that, Carmel. Fantastic. Um... All right, I'm going to uh, now move us to Russell Wilmot from the SES to give us a, an update on uh, the, the kind of overview of the event and just to get a sense of the extent of the, the water that fell, the call outs that SES received and so on. It's, it's really quite uh, astonishing just how big that uh, event was. And also just to draw everyone's attention back to the chat, uh, later on because there are some uh, important things anybody who's spoken so far there's uh, opportunity for you to be supported through that chat so over to you Russell. Uh, thanks Steve can you see the presentation? Yes. Good. Fantastic okay good evening everybody community members, mayor, councillors, Wellington Shire staff, BRV and other agencies. Um, this is a, a bit of a PowerPoint I've put together just to um, basically set the scene for our discussions tonight. Um, SES as an agency is currently going, an up, going through an after action review with its uh, volunteers and staff, and we'll feed that after action review report into EMV and our Emergency Management Commission will talk a little bit more about that when he joins us. Um, firstly, before I start the presentation though, I'd just like to thank Cathy for your comments uh, around uh, the SES volunteers attending to your property. It's always good to get some appreciation for what they do as volunteers and I'll feed that back into the local SES unit. So thanks, Cathy. Um, this presentation here um, on the Gippsland region. So I cover off the whole region because uh, some people may have only been particularly focused on what was happening in your local community, but I sort of talk about the impacts region wide, but then I've got some slides where I'll talk about uh, what occurred in your uh, Wellington Shire. It's not an extensive list. Uh, I haven't covered everything, but it just sort of gives us a bit of a picture and a feel for what actually occurred. So uh, uh, our values. So we normally start our presentations with our values. Uh, and one of the particular ones tonight is uh, we are part of our community. Uh, so that's important. Uh, so the background here, so throughout the night of Wednesday, the 9th of June, and into the following day, 
Victoria experienced a severe weather event with strong winds and heavy rain, which caused widespread damage, flooding and power outages. What would unfold would be the busiest 24 hours in the history of Vic SES, with over 9,000 requests for assistance in a single week. An initial flood watch for Gippsland was issued on Tuesday, with rainfall totals expected of 60 to 100 mil of rain across the flood watch area. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday with another 150 to 250 likely about the ranges. So there's a fair bit of rain coming our way. The focus of the heaviest rainfall would be across West and South Gippsland. The Bureau of Meteorology warned that 19 catchments could be impacted with minor to moderate flooding expected across West Gippsland and the Mitchell River catchment from late Wednesday uh, with the indication that major flooding would be possible. To on top of that, we had a severe weather warning for damaging winds, which was issued on Wednesday the 9th. Uh, for West and South Gippsland and parts of East Gippsland, and those winds turned out to be destructive winds. Uh, a severe weather warning for heavy rainfall was also issued, and that's what's occurred with the flash flooding. So that's why some of your driveways have obviously been washed away. So that heavy rainfall uh, developed around West Gippsland and Central Highlands. Then on top of that, the East Coast slide delivered heavy rain leading to flooding and damaging destructive winds, and it had multiple centres that would influence the location and timing of the heavy, heavy rainfall. So. At one stage in the event, uh, we didn't have an, uh, much of an idea about where that rain would fall. Uh, and in the end, it, uh, it didn't uh, head out eastwards. 24-hour uh, rainfall totals from late Wednesday morning to late Thursday morning, 70 to 120, reaching 150 to 250, which I spoke about before. And I've put a little table together, which uh, shows what some of that rainfall did. Uh, the catchments were already saturated across much of West and South Gippsland and wet moderate and wet to moderately wet through East Gippsland. And as we saw, those people that have the Vic Emergency website uh, web app on their phone just recently over the weekend that we've just gone, uh, it would have been going off with warnings as well because the catchments are very saturated. Um, just in relation to the warnings, uh, just the timings there on Wednesday the 9th, uh, a major at 3.52, another one at 4.19, another major at 4.27. A moderate was issued at 4.43, another moderate at 5.43, and then we had the major flood warning, which was issued at 1.59 on Thursday the 10th. So they're just, uh, obviously, amongst all that, we had a flood watch come out and we had some advice messages and some minor flooding, but uh, it's just those in a short amount of time, uh, which came out uh, in relation to warnings. Uh, the Victorian government declared a state energy emergency after flooding caused cracking at the Alarm Power Station's Moore River Diversion Wall. So that was on the agenda uh, right up the forefront with the Incident Control Centre. The V-line trains on the Gippsland line between Terrelgan and Bansdale were suspended. And then obviously we had the uh, risk of beach erosion, which occurred as well along the Gippsland beaches. There's a little picture there that I took off. I think it was about the 10th of June there with, uh, with the Vic Emergency app. And you can see there all the different catchments that are highlighted and the warnings that were issued and the requests for assistance uh, that SES was receiving at the time. Uh, the daily rainfall total, so again, this was taken off the BOM website and you can see there the particular colours. So we're well and truly in that particular patch right over the centre there, we're uh, over 200 millimetres plus in that uh, patch of rainfall. Some of the rainfall magnitudes across the region. So I've just listed the location of the rain gauges on the left. Um, people may or may not be familiar with those. And then across the top, some dates, uh, the ARA, ARI, which is the average recurrence interval, which is the most commonly used acronym, but we sort of moving towards the AEP now, which is the annual exceedance probability, which is probably when we say a flood that has an AEP of 1% has a 100 likelihood of occurring in any given year. So it shows you there that uh, 9th, 10th and 11th and some of the Mount Baubal rain gauge 280, Erica 180, Ballara 137, and uh, the Warrigal Gazette reported 204 millimetres in less than 24 hours for Walhalla, and people would have seen uh, uh, some of the damages that occurred there. So that would be very close to a 1% rainfall event. Uh, the river flows again across the region. Uh, the table down the left shows the river systems, the gauges, where the gauges are, the dates, and uh, when they actually peaked, and the height that they peaked and the flood class level. So again, there you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six in major, uh, major. Um, we've got four in moderate, and then there's some minors there. So uh, over the just the course of the 10th and 11th there, uh, there was a considerable amount of uh, warnings going out and uh, lots of rivers in major and moderate. Uh, the warnings issued, so uh, just a quick catchment there of the uh, 
uh, warnings between the 8th of June and the 14th of June. So there was 289 warnings in total that were pushed out. Um, so there's see some advice messages there. The moderates were, uh, 56 moderates were put out, 33 majors. There were some major warnings put out, 13 in total. Evacuate now messages for the communities and some clear messages there um, once it was safe to return from those evac notices. So it's quite a lot of warnings over that short period of time. Is that, uh, some of the region. Say, Russell, did you say there were 289 warnings? That's just in that space of time between the 8th and the 14th. Good grief. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Thank you. So, and, and with warnings, it's um, the warning comes from the bomb. They're, they're the agency that uh, instigate the warning, measured on the gauges and the rainfall, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, as SES is the control agency for flood, it's about us then tailoring the warning for the community um, and depending on what the risks are. And that's what goes into the, uh, into the warnings. Yeah. The uh, region impacts, so this is across Gippsland. So five of our LGAs were impacted and 48 regional towns. Uh, communities were isolated, some for several days, and I've heard through some of these community meetings now, some for weeks. Access was cut to most rage and mo uh, roads and major highways by the flooding or trees, which compounded the isolation of local communities. Uh, widespread power and telecommunication outages, there was something like over 200,000 plus. Uh, in re relation to stock losses, um, Ag Vic, they reported at the time that I did this, there was 552 um, pasture and crop loss. Um, there was tons of uh, hay lost and uh, 356 kilometres of fences destroyed. And that doesn't include the fences on your current private property. Uh, infrastructure, lo infrastructure loss is 52. Damage to roads and bridges through erosion, landslides and trees down. And at the start of the incident, so this is right at the beginning of the incident, uh, there was 196 road closures reported in. So that's a fair about it, road closures to get that information out. And they were reported across regional roads, Victoria and through the local government. Uh, parks and forests were closed, uh, including Wilson's Prom. There was storm damage um, on the Srizlecki Ranges, Great Alpine Road, Borbal Tourist Road, Borbal National Park and the State Forest around the Thompson Dan. Uh, the uh, plantation, HPE, the plantation there um, suffered some significant damage. Residential in, uh, properties were impacted by above floor flooding, same with commercials, and there was communities evacuated, as we know. Some of the local impacts uh, that might be relevant to you in the Wellington community, uh, a number of landslides, uh, many local roads were inundated and covered with water, power outages with uh, community members losing food. Due to the length of power that was out, there was dairy farmers that were impacted as well and had to uh, find generators or move their, their uh, cows to uh, a neighbouring property um, to, uh, to get milked, et cetera. So quite a bit of impact there. There was community outages, mobile and landline, which uh, resulted in, uh, in community members not being able to get the information from the agencies in relation to uh, the response and recovery, et cetera. Uh, damage to private driveways, and we heard that uh, tonight already mentioned, access issues are still ongoing for some people. Uh, funny enough, the South Gippsland Highway between Sale and Longford was closed, uh, property destroyed by falling trees. So there was a, a property that had a couple of trees uh, go over it and destroyed it, and it's inhabitable. Uh, large areas of farmland inundated, and we can still see that today as we drive around. Trees uprooted, debris, mud everywhere, the community's isolated, roads blocked by trees, Flooding at the port of sale, um, the sea spray community impacted by flooding and destructive winds, uh, and the worst hits towns, uh, according to the information that we have on our system in relation to who called the 132500 was sale, Yarram, Honeysuckle, Sea Spray, and Stratford. But there might be more, and we'll hear from that tonight. Uh, the response, so in relation to SES's response for the calls through to 132500, we received uh, 1,185 calls just between the 9th of June to the 13th of June. So that's just in our patch in Gippsland. Predominantly 759 were trees down, there was building damage, there was flooding and flood rescues, of course, from people driving through flood water. Uh, Multi-agency response, so all our partner agencies that are currently online tonight, today did a terrific job in supporting us as the control agency. Um, hopefully I haven't left anyone out there. Um, health should be in there as well. Uh, we had task forces, uh, incident management team staff and resources from other parts of SES's region, which was Southwest, Midwest and Central. They were all deployed into Gippsland region ahead of the forecasted flooding. And I suppose given that too, we're in the middle of COVID. So uh, we had people coming all over the place into Gippsland to, uh, to assist with this response and trying to manage the COVID situation at the same time. Uh, the Bansell and Terralgan Incident Control Centres uh, stood up and they started operating 24 seven. 
17,363 SES volunteer hours across the five days, and I'm sure other agencies could add their hours up as well, and it would just be phenomenal. Uh, extensive support from the business community, of, uh, and that is Wellington and community members of Wellington, to support our volunteers in the Incident Control Centre. Uh, forest fire management crews and DELP uh, working with local management areas assessed impacts and facilitated safe access and egress for communities and essential services. And because of the road closures and the significant amount, a road planning operation cell was activated at the Incident Control Centre just to manage the road recovery across Gippsland. So just from the size of it. And, uh, and that's it, Steve. Um, just a quick uh, little bit of an overview about um, what occurred uh, on those couple of days across the whole region, and then a little bit of a snapshot um, which occurred across Wellington. And I'm sure the community members on tonight can share some of their experiences as well. So uh, uh, thanks everybody for uh, for listening. And that's uh, that's the end of that one, Steve. Thanks very much, Russell. Terrific. And again, very good on time there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, I've just seen that uh, the Emergency Management Commissioner, Andrew Crisp, has arrived. Welcome, Andrew. It'd be great to hear from you. Um, we've skipped over you. We're just waiting for you. So it's, it's great to have you here. Over to you, if you like. Thanks, um, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Great. Uh, look, um, apologies for being late and apologies. There's this thing called COVID going on at the moment. So sorry, I've been caught up with that. And um, I'm going to have to leave shortly for, for another meeting around that and some numbers and things for tomorrow. But I, I, did, I did want to make a point of at least joining you for, for a short period of time because uh, like my friends and colleagues at BRV, Carmel and Kane and others, um, we, we do take very seriously the, the interaction with communities. I've heard Russell's presentation a number of times and he does it very well. But I, I guess my, my reflection, he sort of touched on it um, somewhat towards the end of his presentation. You, you, you rattle off those numbers and they're really, really impressive and across the whole footprint and then specifically in relation to what impacted on your particular community. But you're the ones that were impacted. You know, you, you as, as community were the ones that felt, felt that. And um, my, my position is very much about this looking, listening and learning because there are things that were done very, very well. And, and Russell highlighted some of those and, and some great work by, by council and by other emergency services and by the community themselves that really rallied and came together to support each other and did that so, so well. But are there things we can do better in the future? Of course there are, and there are. And that's what, what we need to, to better understand. We've got a process around that. So um, as we would normally do, various um, our agencies will be running their own debriefs. Um, council will be no doubt running, running theirs. And this, there were specific parts of this emergency, this flood and storm event that impacted um, the community. So whether that was in relation to energy, so there'll be a separate review around that. Um, telecommunications, Russell touched on the, the impact of roads and transport, so a separate piece around that. So we're pulling all that together in a coordinated framework and uh, we will be consulting with, with community around that. So whether that's a, a marketing company looking at community sentiment or through those debriefs. And that, that's what this, this meeting's actually about also, so I can actually listen to what you have to say and I'll feed that back in, into the process. But I, I don't want to um, upset the flow of this particular meeting, but I just want to reassure you um, that, yeah, very, very serious about what we can learn from you all. And again, acknowledging the great work um, of the emergency services, uh, local government and others, but you, you as a community. So thanks for the opportunity to join you. Thanks very much, Andrew. And look, thanks for taking the time out of a very busy schedule. And obviously, it's a, an emergency you're dealing with there. So we, we really appreciate you being able to spend whatever time you can. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, let's keep moving because let's see where we're up to on this wonderful agenda of ours. Um, we're going to now hear an update. And this is the last update we'll hear a very significant important one because it's from uh, council and um, and then we'll go and we'll hear go back to those <clears throat> those questions concerns that you've had and get some uh, get some answers um, but let's hear from uh, the acting manager of recovery emergency manage municipal recovery manager sorry Sam it's it's there's many, many things that you're doing, obviously. So it's, let's hear from you and uh, hear particularly the overview of the impact on the LGA and, and your recovery works update. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Um, 
the reason that there's a little bit of confusion about my title is because, um, yeah, obviously I have a job title, but then there's a portion of my role that's delegated to me, which is the municipal recovery manager part. Um, right. So Thank hi, you. everyone. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name's Sam Matthews and I'm the acting manager uh, recovery and emergencies at the moment. Um, thanks for joining us tonight and thanks to those who have already shared your experiences and I look forward to hearing um, more from you. Um, if you haven't already provided your contact details, I'd love to receive them. If you want to jump into the chat, you can actually change the to function um, just to an individual. So you can change that to me if you like and send me a private message with your contact details. I can take those down and get in touch with you after the meeting because I note that there are a number of people here tonight that we don't already have um, cases or information from. So it would be great to get you in the system and, and get you registered so that we can get in touch with you and um, provide you with some support. Um, so in terms of impacts, uh, just expanding, I suppose, on what um, Russell's already spoken to in his presentation, but um, there were widespread power outages uh, for significant periods of time. So in some areas, power didn't come back on for weeks after the event, which some of you here tonight may have experienced. As a result of those power outages, there were massive food losses. Um, so uh, some people in our most remote areas who stock up on food because they're not close to supermarkets, lost fridges and freezers um, full of food, um, so in some cases multiple fridges and freezers, so, you know, hundreds and, and sometimes thousands of dollars worth of food. Um, there were communications outages, so we know that there were people who had no mobile or landline access for um, a minimum of three days in some areas. Um, and therefore they weren't able to receive any relief messaging, um, any of our communications in terms of um, uh, support that we could provide. Um, and they weren't able to call triple zero either, obviously, amongst all of the other um, issues that are associated with not having access to communications. Um, there were land slips. Um, People with children who had special needs um, that struggled with the situation due to not having access to the usual services and changes to routine, all of those sorts of things. Um, obviously, mental health strains and stresses um, experienced by a wide range of people um, on different levels. Um, in terms of the agricultural side of things, there were, there were dairies that either had to source a generator for themselves in some way or take their cows to the neighbouring property to be milked for the period of time that they were out of power, um, which put considerable strain on not only them but their neighbours. Um, there were stock losses, so in terms of sheep and cattle, um, there were a number of deaths, um, there was fencing damage. Um, significant fallen timbers and debris to clean up. Um, and there was also driveway damage on private property. So some people um, with significantly damaged long driveways have received quotes in excess of $20,000 to repair that damage, which they simply can't afford. Um, and there are access issues outstanding as a result of that work not being done. Um, so this is something that's regularly discussed with agencies like BRV, um, Bushfire Recovery Victoria, sorry to use the acronym, um, in terms of what support can be provided. Um, so we're still working on that side of things. Um, some vulnerable people who usually receive health and support services were not able to access those um, due to roads being cut, resources being reallocated and dangerous weather. Um, some people who receive home help were not even able to, you know, shower for days um, because they usually they need help with those sorts of functions. Um, so there were significant impacts in those areas for some individuals. Uh, we had one total loss in terms of a home um, that two trees fell on that I'm aware of and will need to be rebuilt as well. So that was a very extreme case. Uh, so what we've been doing to date. Um, Physical cleanups in terms of trees and debris, um, particularly around roads um, and, and public areas. Um, reconstruction works in relation to landslips and physical damage, including um, like one community member mentioned before, I think it was Patrick potentially, um, about bridges being repaired, repaired um, and yeah, um, other roads and infrastructure that have um, construction works happening. Um, Blaze Aid were based out of Hayfield 
and were working on repairing fencing up until the recent lockdown, so they had to leave the area. Um, referrals have been made to the Gippsland Emergency Relief Fund um, where damage had occurred and financial assistance was required, which some people here tonight may have received some of that funding. Um, so Gippsland Emergency Relief Fund have been incredibly helpful and responsive through this whole um, event. And I know they've um, provided some really generous relief. Um, I think we've made more than 30 referrals to them and they've all been paid um, on the day that we made the referrals. So that was excellent. Um, counselling services have been undertaken. There were hot meals and showers provided at various locations during the, the event. And we thank the volunteers and community groups that made this happen, which some of them are in the room tonight. I know um, in particular, Kathy Cook um, did a lot in that area. So thank you, Kathy. Um, referrals are made to Bushfire Recovery Victoria to help with the cleanup in terms of um, trees, like Rain mentioned earlier. Um, we established the relief phone line to receive calls from residents that were in need um, and we connected with individuals, um, sorry, we connected individuals with temporary accommodation where that was required. We had a number of people that live in that are permanent residents of caravan parks that are very close to water, bodies of water that um, needed to sort of leave the area. We had 249 active cases registered um, with us for support. Um, so we've done initial and secondary impact assessments for all of those cases. And we provided information to people about the OzNet power outage payments, uh, emotional support services, need for feed, road closures, um, food relief, access to showers, um, various other supports. Um, we had free green waste disposal at our Kilmany, Mafra, Locksport, Sea Spray, Hayfield, Stratford and Yarram uh, transfer stations. And Yarram also accepted food wastage um, and storm damage debris. Um, we're currently recruiting for resources to help with the recovery process so that we can continue um, getting back in contact with all of our cases and hopefully some of you tonight who aren't already registered with us um, so that we can um, help out further and just get, get a real sense of who still needs that assistance. Um, so we're bringing um, yeah, a couple of new staff on board to help out with that so that we can get onto that within the next week. Uh, and our next focus is yeah to make contact with all of those cases again um, and where relevant um, we'll be re making referrals to for example Uniting which um, someone uh, Kerry from Uniting is here with us tonight so um, that's our next step. Uh, yeah so if you haven't already provided your contact details to me I'd, I'd love you to do so um, and yeah just feel free to send me a private message if you can. Thank you. Oops, on mute. Uh, thanks so much, Sam, for that. And uh, fantastic to know that people can have that very direct connection with you. So thank you for, for um, providing all of that. Um, and good to hear just how much work has obviously been going on as well. Um, okay, so that's the end of our formal kind of presentations, updates, overviews. And we're going to come back now to you uh, in the community and, and start looking at some of these things that you brought up in introductions. Of course, there may be others now uh, of you who, who would also like to either introduce yourself um, uh, as we go along and have an experience that you'd be uh, more than willing to, uh, well, we'd, we'd certainly be more than willing to hear anything you've got to share in terms of experiences. This is really helpful. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I believe, uh, Tom, your got direct contact now with council. They've um, made contact with you just to talk the specifics of the uh, the little video shot that you, you gave us all before. So that's going to be dealt with directly by, by council. Um, so I'm going to go back to you, uh, Rowena, because I believe in terms of the issues that you were talking about, we could hear from uh, Dan Garlick, I think, from Western um, CMA, Western Gippsland CMA. Would you like to, to tackle that one, uh, Dan? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, and thanks, Rowena, for um, highlighting your challenges and the impact that it's had on the, um, the work that you've done along the waterway of Reedy Creek. Um, we'd be really keen to come out and assess 
assess uh, the impact on the riparian vegetation that you've you've planted there in the fencing, um, and then subject to funding, we might be in a position to to provide some support. So if you can pass on your contact details, Rowena, via Sam, um, as she indicated earlier, then she can pass it on to me, and I'll I'll um, get someone in touch with you to come out and have a have a bit of a squiz. So we can we can definitely have a look at where it's impacted the waterway. Um, I think you had a secondary issue though in relation to the bridge of the road, which uh, it might be best for someone else to to address that one. So hopefully that might be able to help you, Rowena. Thank you, Dan. And um, and, and apologies, everyone. I've, I'm I'm battling kids on bandwidth, <laughs> so I'll just turn my video off. But I am here. Good to have you here, um, Rowena. Did you want to just refresh uh, people's memories with the that other issue? Um, yeah, well, it was really, it, it was really about, um, I guess, management of the road surface um, versus where, where, where the drainage, where the runoff from the road is diverted mm. um, and where it's diverted onto private property. Um, and in our case, it, 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 it runs through our property and then into Reedy okay. Creek. Yeah. So there are also issues there, I believe. Okay. Um, and I know it. Uh, the the culverts <laughs> on um on that road are are still running, mm. not just trickling. They're gushing some of them, mm. um, gushing onto our property. There's there's one spot where uh, you know a length of culvert about one and a half meters long of concrete culvert has washed down about um maybe 10 metres into our property. Wow. So it's just the strength of the water yeah. and it's scouring out new, yeah. new channels. Um, yeah. I, I, have, I have spoken to a um, customer service rep at the council who was very helpful and very good. Um, the road engineers say that the that council is isn't responsible for any damage um, where they're simply clearing out existing culverts right let's let's hear then from and thank you for that that background because i think that's going to be very helpful to the people who may be able to support you um, and given that you've already done a little bit of um research there uh, i noticed sam you've got your hand up there can you uh provide some uh, support there. Yeah, I guess just reinforcing um, Dan, what Dan said, um, Rowena, if I could grab your contact details, that'd be great because um, I will also have a chat with our roads team and understand the matter a bit further in terms of their response to you. But um, I would really like to register you in the system so that we can see what other support might be available, if you don't mind. Certainly, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Dan, thank you, also. Mm, terrific. All right, excellent. Um, so the next person on my list was Patrick, and that was the uh, the question of the significant trees, the tree volumes uh, in the river, the impact on the bridge, and um, and yeah. Did you want to say anything more about that, Patrick, to refresh our memory? I think you might be on mute, Patrick. You might be on mute. You are on mute, actually. Just click that good old unmute button. Yes, there we go. Yeah, how's that now? Sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks, Dick. Um, yeah, I think we've got two issues. One is the driveway damage. And just listen, we haven't got a quote to get that fixed up. And I guess we'll do that. And then perhaps um, uh, have, I might have to talk to Sam and just see if we can get any assistance with that, not necessarily from the council, but from other mm. authorities. Mm. But I think the council... Um, uh, twice this year has prepared the bridge and as I said earlier we're very thankful for that but the damage to the bridge and to our property was caused by all these logs coming down as I said earlier mm. on the first flood in March eight semi-trailers of logs were taken away mm. down the river it hit the bridge thank god the bridge stayed in position, but um, there was a lot of damage done. And a lot of the fallen trees, a lot of them were sawn logs. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess 
my question is, you know, we've got contractors who go up and down Tara Valley Road clearing trees and other debris which ends up in the river. And then no doubt there are uh, property owners as well on the other side of the river. You know, when trees come down, they sort of end up and I, I don't know how we can improve that situation. Um, okay, well, look, thank you. Um, and Kane is, um, is going to have a go with that one. Over to you, Kane. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. And thanks, Patrick. I'm just conscious that both DELP and regional roads or what was known as Vic Roads aren't online tonight, but I'm happy to take that yeah. one on and come back to you and I'll chat to both those agencies tomorrow and, and provide some feedback oh, um, as well. Thanks very much. Fantastic. How will that yeah. come back to, to Patrick? Yeah, I'll come back via Sam, but um, okay. yeah, yeah, I think again, Patrick, if Sam... Pardon me, doesn't have I your think, details, then, yeah. I think, Sam, have you got my details? I think you do. Anyway, I'll... Um, okay. If you could pop them in the chat for me, Patrick, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And, Steve, sorry, Patrick, can I just check? That was Reedy Creek, wasn't it? Just so I've got that right. No, no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, Tara River. Tara River. Okay. No worries. Tara River. Yep. And the road is Tara Valley Road. Tara Valley Road. Okay, no worries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Kane. Thanks very um, much. I think, I think Dan, uh, Dan would like to say something about that too. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Look, just a general comment that um, what Patrick's just outlined, um, uh, we've seen a um, uh, significant amount of debris and, and logs in all, all, all catchments as a result of the storm and flood event. And um, yeah, so it's more just a, a comment um, more than uh, an answer kind of follow up as, as he indicated with the relevant agencies. But I, yeah, from, from our perspective in terms of what we've um, observed post event um, in all affected systems, yeah, there was a, a huge amount of um, debris logs um, sediment that's come down. So yeah, not surprised to hear that. Thanks, Dan. I also heard from you, Patrick, I might have got this wrong, but I heard that there were like semi-trailer semi loads, like eight or so, back in March. Is that right? Yeah, from the, from the March event. Um, and, and I guess uh, we've only lived here 10 years, but we haven't mm. had a that much timber come down mm. in previous years. And, of course, this was a bit unusual. So no doubt there was a cleaning out of... Uh, debris in the river uh, uh, there are three semi-trailers wedged up against the bridge and on top of the bridge and then five semi-trailers from the bridge to our entrance so right. just gives an idea of the scope of that yeah uh, uh, huge yeah. fortunately they weren't actually semi-trailers but obviously the volumes were that that much correct <laughs> I just want to get clarification you didn't actually have semi-trailers wedged up the, the it, well they needed it was eight semi-trailer loads filled with logs Unbelievable. That is so, so incredible. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and I noticed the has got his hand up too. Did you want to say something, Gary? I was just going to make an observation, Steve. The event we had in March was more localised, but interestingly enough, we had a similar volume of water come down the Tarra River. Mm -hmm. I noticed Rowena, Rowena was talking about Reedy Creek, the same thing, but it was, a, it was quite a localised flood. Um, fortunately, it wasn't any bigger than it than it was, it did enough damage, as Patrick and Marina, Marina are referring to. But yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it probably wasn't the same ferocity of winds or um, certainly we had the no, didn't have the power outages and it was just, no. um, but we had a similar volume of water on the top of, um, on the top of the catchment at uh, Balook. Um, and uh, yeah, and so Patrick's bridge got hammered both times and it's quite amazing, yeah, as he said, that the, the I saw the photo of what it looked like after the first event with all the, all the timber lodged against the side of the bridge. It did look like a beaver dam. And I think we're pretty lucky we didn't lose your bridge either either time, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Gary. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> thanks for that. And of course, yeah, that's extraordinary. Um, you know, there's two one in a hundred year floods to happen in the one year is just, you know, insane. These are the times we're living in, of course, aren't they? So, um, all right, uh, let's keep moving. This is great. Uh, we're going to Rain's issue, which was um, 
his general question is a really good one around the general bushfire risk so that uh, the, the more immediate emergency of his of his house being threatened by the overhanging tree was sorted out but what about the logs on the ground anybody um kind of got any you know intel to add to that Is there any kind of strategy that people know about in terms of what happens to those logs that are sitting around now? Is it just a slow, post, slow process of getting contractors in to remove them? The mayor, yes, Gary. Yes, Steve, I did have a couple of, it's a good question. I did have a couple of uh, community people ask about the possibility of, of, the, of community members looking for firewood, mm -hmm. going out and basically, yeah, chopping up trees, on the sides of roads, there was some suggestion that maybe in the past DELP have just eased up um, or RRV may have eased up on on the requirements or the restrictions about, you know, collecting firewood from roadsides or mm. in anywhere where there's a tree down. Mm. I mean, obviously there's possibly OHS and traffic issues, but I, I just wondered if, if that's a, an issue that can be addressed because there's always people looking for firewood if the community is allowed to collect some of this um, mm. this fallen timber, we might have a win-win. Yeah, thank you very much. Is there anyone, maybe BRV, Carmel, do you want to? Kane might be closer to it than I am, but it's my understanding that that still, that DELP is pretty strong on its message um, to, that, to not have roadside collection of, of firewood. Um, just because of the safety issues there. So um, in regards to fallen timber, we know that this is um, still a, a big issue across, across the state. And the, the, private clean, the, the, the state cleanup program of private properties goes to cleaning up structures, homes and sheds, et cetera, and hazardous trees that are still standing, but it doesn't extend to these large fallen trees that people um, are having on, on their properties. One option um, at, that is available is to call Vic Forests, who um, are, and you can just go onto their website, and they have offered to assess properties that have um, fallen trees down to provide advice and linkages to uh, suppliers of timber, if that timber might be suitable for milling and um, potentially to, to sell the timber, if you like. Um, notwithstanding that option, we are, again, quite, quite keen to understand where there are people who have these fallen trees that can't remove them themselves, that don't have the means to do so, to be in contact with us via our 1-800 number, which you can... 1-800-560-760. Um, Cass, you can put it in the, in the chat. Yes, um, and, and it's uh, also at brv.vic.gov.au. Um, I am um, engaging with our minister and, and with government around the, you know, the scale of the issue of fallen trees. We're also engaged in um, discussions with the, um, the chief fire officer at DELP, um, Chris Hardman, um, and he's really looking closely at how to prioritise um, mitigating bushfire risk ahead of the summer, um, which, um, which is not likely to be actually the really big fallen trees are not likely to be causing the problem this summer, but it is the crowns of the trees and the, the finer fuels that will be a problem in terms of bushfire risk. And we're trying to get the message out through communications campaigns to property owners to really focus on that. Um, those finer fuels to mitigate to mm. mitigate by risk. Um, so we don't have the complete answer at the moment for these fallen trees. We, um, but all I what I can say is um, we 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 know it's an issue. I'm providing advice into government. I'm really hopeful that there'll be um, you know some feedback and uh, to, back to communities you know over the course of the next two to three weeks as to if there is additional supports being made available for that particular issue. Just want to stress the resolution isn't there yet mm -hmm. um, and it, it will be up for government consideration, um, but I'm, I'm hopeful we'll know, with, you know within two to three weeks um, what, what if, if there are further um, supports mm -hmm. available for that particular issue.
Thanks so much, Carmel. Um, Rain, you had your hand up there. Did you want to ask a further question or provide some clarification? Uh, no, I think Carmel um, pretty much uh, covered most of it. And um, to answer Gary, most of the trees that we're concerned about that are down are very close to a metre in diameter. So mm. while the locals, while they were clearing the road, did take what they wanted, I guess, um, there's some that's just, it's, it's just not um, accessible to people with normal mm. equipment. Mm. And definitely hard to get a group of people together at the moment with COVID uh, to try and do any kind of group cleanup. Mm. So, yeah. And, yeah. So anyway, Rain Vic Forests is an option for a first, um, you know, um, it, it may not be able to deliver anything, but they're saying they're willing to assess, um, you know, and, and to link if, if, if the timber is possibly millable to, to, to link property owners directly to suppliers who may be willing to remove it and, and pay for it. Mm. But yeah, it, it's just an option that may or may not work for you. Mm. Thanks, Carmel, uh, and thanks, Rain. Um, let's move on to Kathy. I think you're in Sea Spray Road, um, and we're looking for some support. You'd had some initial uh, support, but we're waiting for something more. Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Oh, good on you. Can you do you want to just um, maybe again uh, restate the particular the specific question? That'd be great. Sorry, I didn't get it down. No, Sam, I've given all my uh, my information to Sam, so hopefully I'll get some support. Um, we also, our driveway is pretty um, trashed from it all and also from the rain that we've had over the weekend as well because we, our, all of our backyard and everything is still just, we've been trying to trench to try to get rid of water. Water goes down onto the road and then because of... Um, the new footpath they've put in it's just sits down there there's no um way for it to get out so our driveway is getting washed away and um also the water's still sitting down at the new footpath so that's a bit unfortunate so yeah yeah um thank you anybody wanted to jump in at that point with any other information just Kathy? to say that i do i do have kathy's details thank you kathy and i'll touch base with you brilliant thank you thanks sam um if i just asked kathy um is, if she's a primary producer or not no okay thank you okay um lisa i can see your hand up there what would you like to to say I don't think you we've heard from you yet would you like to to say anything great to hear from you hi there yes thanks guys um i don't have my video on because um reception is not too flash so i'm just no trying problem. to salvage that Good on you. um hoping you can hear me okay as well yeah, it's excellent yep oh good day um i guess firstly i don't know where i'll start um kathy i think it was that was just on um, yes. I'm not sure if you've uh, got insurance, but if you have, if you check your policy, there is a cover um, for a certain uh, distance of your driveway to be covered. Okay. Um, just check the clause because recent, if, if you've re renewed it recently, they've put in wording that it must be a sealed driveway. Um, my policy was renewed in July, but the event happened in June. So our driveway is being covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. We're, a, we're a, um, a gravel driveway. So we've had a lot of extensive damage, trees down and all of that. So that might be one avenue that you could look at for assistance there. Um, the you. same. That's okay. And the same with um, fencing. Uh, my policy covers, it's just the household policy, but it does cover up to two, two kilometres of fencing. Wow. So we're a rural property out of town. Yeah. Fantastic. Great intel, Lisa. Thank you so much. This is what's so good about forums like this. You know, there's so much wisdom in the room and uh, things like that can be just absolute gems. So thank you. Um, Steve, it's um, Kane here. We might try and share that on the FAQs and council website after the meeting as well, because really great tips like that yeah. can help so yeah. many other people. So thanks, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Thank you, Kane, too. It's a good reminder um, that there will be a, 
uh, an FAQ sheet that's generated uh, that you should all get your hands on. Um, that will be on council website. Neville, did you have your hand up? Yes, I did, Steve. Yes. Thanks very much for this program. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, with you for about 15 minutes, so uh, I haven't said anything at this stage. I'm just sort of oh, good to have you sitting here, here yeah. taking in everything in. Uh, our, our particular situation is similar to Rain's. Uh, we live in Karajung and uh, we live in uh, a street that is a disused road. Uh, we're the only house in the street. We, uh, we have a, uh, a private driveway which comes uh, off um, Old Karajung South Road. Um, <clears throat> our driveway has been uh, uh, dug up by uh, Osnet mainly. Everybody gets bogged there when they come in to do anything. Uh, there is a, a line of a, a three phase line that runs uh, along our boundary, not on our property, but uh, they need to have access uh, via our property and uh, everything's been churned up. But the main reason for my interest in, in uh, your uh, Zoom meeting tonight is a, uh, a dangerous tree that didn't fall. We had six trees fall on our property. Uh, on an acre of land. Um, one, one fell and completely demolished my car and trailer. Uh, one fell on my neighbor's house and completely destroyed it. Um, fortunately, uh, it's a holiday house for her, so she wasn't there. Um, the others uh, generally uh, uh, destroyed uh, most of my chook pens and uh, my veggie patch. But the one that's causing a concern, uh, and our, our insurance company, GIO, have been fantastic, uh, but a tree that hasn't fallen and is dangerous is our responsibility. And that's why we've, we've re registered with BRV, and uh, uh, the tree in question has a, a crack across the root. There are two, two trunks, and uh, the crack has has uh, increased uh, from a millimetre to a now three millimetres. And it, um, it will destroy uh, another shed if it falls. Mm -hmm. um, my my uh, beef, if I have a beef, is the fact that BRV uh, say they're going to do things and they have done such and such uh, up to now. They've, they've got to the stage where they have been and an arborist has agreed that the tree is dangerous. He's also found other trees that have got hung up branches in them that I didn't even know about. Um, and these trees are you know, 60 feet high, um, but I've heard nothing since and that was probably three weeks ago. And I'm afraid that this tree will fall before the, the wheels in motion actually get to decide whether BRV are going to deal with it or whether I have to deal with it myself. Uh, and that's my concern at the moment. Yeah, well, and a very just... legitimate one too, Neville. So, yeah, thank you. So, Carmel, over to you. Yeah, no, th thank you, Neville. And um, I'm happy to chase that up personally straight away give you a call tomorrow um just wondering what's the best way to get your detail um tonight i'm not sure carmel <laughs> i i actually I, i'm registered with brv uh, yeah. i did i did send another email about uh, two weeks ago um mm -hmm. reminding brv that um the tree is still standing um and it took them uh, at least two weeks to reply to my email and they virtually just said we're dealing with it and it'll get it, something will happen soon but yeah. nothing's well, happened. Personally um, do, I just don't know your surname if, if, I, if you're comfortable sharing that or. Yes, yes. my surname is, is Chiselet it's spelled C-H-I-S-E-L-E-T-T. -E yeah, thank you. And, and I'll no. give you my mobile number if you wish. Oh, great. Thank you. 0414 
double three six five yeah. three two. We'll give you a call tomorrow. Thank you. And Thanks, Carl. I'm surprised it's taken that long. We yeah. have been inundated, but I don't think it should have taken that long to come back. So I'll give well, you a call. There you go, Neville. It, it, it is it is a concern, but what what I, what I will say, I commend everybody for their interest and um, and obviously there are lots of people uh, that have, have, are involved this evening who are in far worse situations than what we are. And, um, and I think it's wonderful that, that uh, our Wellington Shire eventually has got round to doing something like this. Uh, it's taken a while, but um, blacks like Gary Stevens uh, generally get things happening, I'm afraid. Um, there should be more like you, Gary, on the, on the, on the council, I'm afraid. Thank you. Good on you, Neville. And uh, thank you so much for sharing all that. And I, I must say, for someone who's had six huge trees fall on a property that's only one acre in size and had so much damage, a pretty grateful kind of person. Well, <laughs> the, place, the place looks like a, yum, a lumber yard at the moment, Steve. But they're still all there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, but uh, I believe, um, just another plug for GIO, um, they are going to actually remove them. Um, wow. Uh, uh, which is incredible. I, I, I've, I first uh, learned that they weren't going to remove them, but now they are. So um, the balls and everything, I mean, the root balls are, some of the root balls are 20 feet high. Um, wow, that might be another one uh, came for the. <laughs> they uh, they go to. I was just losing you a bit, Neville. Your internet. Sorry. Uh, That's right. Uh, I, I just I'm just saying that the root balls are that high and mm. and that big that uh, I, I'm I'm reasonable at a chainsaw, but this, this stuff is too big for me. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was just saying it's very interesting information about uh, GIO being prepared to uh, uh, move them. That might be an interesting FAQ uh, detail to add. Kane, I don't know, in terms of people checking their policies. I mean, that's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. And I think Neville, Carmel will give you a call, but I'll also follow up with a cleanup team for you. I'm aware that the works um, right. for cleanup aren't due to start till about the 20th through this Drizlecki's Karajong. So I'll just follow up with them tomorrow because I know they are around and about next week sometime, but we'll follow up with you tomorrow and try and get that done as, as soon as possible. Thanks, Kane. And uh, and thanks, Neville and everyone. Well, that's what you get, you see. You turn up to a forum like this and you get people at the top getting your phone number and giving you a ring the next day. So, you know, <laughs> cut to the chase. This is the place to be. So, um. Thank you. And are there any other people from the community who have not spoken yet? And there's a little note that um, Cass put in the uh, chat there that, you know, it's okay if, if you don't feel comfortable speaking up, please, you know, do so through the chat because uh, you will be contacted um, and whatever issue you're dealing with can be uh, dealt with through uh, that contact or you can contact directly uh, the council email. There's a number of different contacts that have been put in through the chat if you scroll back through, including, including the emergency management at wellington.vic.gov.au email, the also the 1800 number, um, which gives you access to a whole range of, of recovery support. So anybody else? Yes, Patrick. Oh, Steve, I, I don't have any more issues, but I have to leave to go to another meeting. But I just wanted to congratulate the council and yourself for organising this. It's been most helpful and, and a very good discussion. Thanks very much, Steve. Oh, good on you. Thank Bye. you very much. Well, I didn't organise anything, but I, I thanks for your appreciation and definitely uh, great to have you along today and thanks for your, your input. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, everyone. See Bye. you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, just in terms of where we are on the agenda, if there aren't any other questions, um, we can move to the next part of the agenda, which was 
um, we're going to hear from BRV in terms of these uh, helpful structures called community recovery committees. And they're a way in which you directly as a, as a community can be involved in, um, because you're at the coalface, involved in um, you know, ongoing strategic uh, action. And uh, they do have significant weight in terms of uh, uh, how council seeks information, as I understand. But I will hand over to the experts there. Carmel, did you want to um, jump in and talk about those? Um, yes, uh, I think we've just got Lisa with her hand up. That's the only thing. That, oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, Lisa. Did you still have your hand up before or, or was that another question? No, actually, I was just going to add something in um, before. I've quickly got to go to a meeting as well. I'm on school yeah. council. So um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I know we're talking a lot about trees and clean up and that type of thing. Um, we had that issue with our driveway. We've got a full claim happening with our house. Um, the rain blew in up under the, the roof and everything saturated down in the ceiling, in the walls and into the internal space of the house. So we're actually not living in it at the moment. We're in a caravan and we're waiting on the outcome of insurance on where we're going to end up. But that's our experience with this storm. So not necessarily um, structural mm. impact on the home itself, but we've got the water, not flood water and muddy, but coming in down from the roof line and up under the floorboards. So it's, it's quite different. Mm. Um, we've been in extensive um, contact with our insurance, which is also GIO, which I might add. Mm. Um, but we've also received excellent support from the council and uh, the, the, all the other emergency groups, sorry, it all eludes me at the moment, but um, I just want to say thanks for this forum too. It's it's excellent to see and um, might add it would be good to have an, perhaps a follow-up or I'm not sure whether you will send out a message or I don't know, something else just to carry on, so not just a, a one contact thing at this point. But, um, yeah, very interested to see what happens and thank you. Good on you, Lisa. Thank you. And thanks for that intel on the, uh, the insurance front as well. Um, I've noticed, Sam, you've got your hand up. Do you want to say something to that? Yeah, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind just quickly um, sending me your phone number in the chat, just um, directly to me, um, and I'll make contact with you as well. And, and just to add to what you've said, this won't be the only conversation that we have with the community. There will be follow-ups. This is just the first conversation that we're having, and it unfortunately has to be in the online format due to um, yeah, reasons beyond our control, but we definitely will be um, talking further. So thank you. No worries at all. Thank you very much. Um, I'll add my details in and then I'll exit. Thanks, guys. Well, good luck with the uh, council meeting. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Melanie, we haven't heard from you. It'd be lovely to, to hear any of your uh, experience and any questions you have. Um. Yeah, look, firstly, I'd like to apologise for um, joining you late. Being a dairy farmer, I was not available not at, at the all. beginning. Um, but I, firstly, I guess I would like to say that, you know, I'm from Binge and Worry. We were you're really happy with the support that we received from the Wellington Shire. Um, we were one of the areas that were without power for quite a, you know extensive period of time. My husband and I started doing uh, community dinners at our local hall for you know, our, our neighbours and, and the you know, wider community, um, I guess just to give people an opportunity to get together. It was a really tricky time for everybody. Um, we then managed to get um, the uh, Kathy Cook and, and her team um, and Gary Stevens and everyone on board. Um, we ended up with some um, like a mobile shower block brought out so that our local farmers could even shower, which is something they weren't able to do at home. Wow. Um, as you can imagine, a dairy farmer that doesn't get to shower regularly is not someone that's winning new friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, for that's we were really happy. Um, probably a little disappointed that we had to seek that. Um, we were unaware that, you know, things were available to us. So, but once we were onto it, really happy with the response. Uh, but then secondly, um, I'm also an insurance broker. So I just wanted to just put it out there that if you have, if you're aware of anybody that's having 
um, prolonged issues with insurance companies if they feel they're not perhaps getting the results that they need through their insurance, um, I'd be more than happy to, you know, have a look over their, their policy and their policy wordings and just see if I can help them out in any way as well. I've done that recently with a couple of others. So if there's any assistance I can offer, I'm more than happy to do that. Good on you, Melanie. That's uh, a great thing to offer. Thank you very much for that. Um, are your contact details available anywhere? For people uh, I'm happy to them? give you a, a mobile number or something if you would like. Uh, yeah, Melanie, if you wouldn't mind popping it in the chat to me, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And yeah, your surname as well? Yep, yeah, thanks. absolutely. Terrific. Yeah, now I can organise that for sure. Thank you very much. Um, no all right. Uh, maybe we can go to you. Now, Carmel, read the CRC stuff. Yes, and I'll just be brief and we can provide more information in, in writing. But actually, um, Melanie gave a really nice segue <laughs> um, into this topic. Uh, to, so just to, um, just to share that um, community recovery committees, um, it, is, it, it is a forum that communities could, could choose to, um, to, to form and to establish uh, following this event. Um, after the, the 2019-20 bushfires, there's been 22 community recovery committees formed across eastern uh, um, Gippsland, East Gippsland and, and up in the northeast. And where communities, and we found that where communities um, can come together to share their experiences, but also to represent their broader committees, um, that can form a, a a really powerful advocacy and coherent voice into local and state government to have us, you know, best understand some of, particularly some of the ongoing issues um, that you've experienced and are concerned that you may experience in the future. And some of what I've heard tonight, you know, around you know, issues around the creek and logs coming down the creek, et cetera, et cetera, might be, you know, is an example of, um, of an issue that not only has occurred following this emergency, but, um, you know, our concerns that we want to keep advocating into local and state government to see is there anything that can be done for longer term solutions so that this doesn't happen in, into the future. Um, so we call these, you know, community recovery groups. It's, um, we have found that they're great support groups that, um, and, and that it is, it is one way for communities to you know to think about is is this a useful thing for us to do um, in its own right um, we've been asked around asked around funding etc and they're not they're not they don't come with with funding but um but what we do is we sort of say if this is something you want to do then then absolutely brv and and, and i'm sure council um you know it, it are, are there to, to listen and to and to look at what you are um, interested to discuss and dialogue with us and what we commit to do is um, is is for you to have you know that voice and for us to share in information that we have around the particular matters of priority for you and issues that you're raising to see if we can't if you be like co-design and look at, and look at options um, to help meet your needs so I think we're just really happy to put out information into um, the feedback from this meeting to just to explain a little bit more about about th this kind of forum and then it's absolutely um fine to you know if that's something you want to do or, or don't want to do it's up to communities and what we're finding is that when you know communities want to do this and where they want to let you know have sort of this sort of leadership role if you like and it's leadership through advocacy and engagement with with um local and state government then, and then often it can actually provide this um, provide better outcomes actually for communities because it makes it makes sure we're aligned to what to what you need and what you want. Um, so I just thought I'd raise that tonight. It's quite early in the piece, um, so it's not something that needs to happen right away or at all. And it might be that some some way down the track after these, um, you know, after the cleanups done and after you've come together and thought about, you know, some legacy issues that are still ongoing, that, that might be a time when you, you might want to find out more information about um, this kind of group and this kind of forum and what's mm -hmm. available to support it. Uh, thanks very much, Carmel. And I noticed um, Catherine's asked there about support that might be provided 
to the CRC from BRV. Did you want to talk to that, Kane? Yeah, yeah, I can quickly talk to that. I mean, as Carmel um, mentioned earlier, we are sort of at the moment listening to needs and, and be interested if um, CRCs are something that people would like to do in their community. And obviously we've been feeding those needs um, up into government and ministers to have a chat about what be, might be needed going forward, which might form funding bids or, or assistance down the track. Um, we have provided to council some funds to at least put some positions on to assist community with recovery, um, which hopefully I think Sam start in the next few weeks. But we certainly also have a capability within BRV to support CRCs. We have a small um, community engagement team and we also have um, some resources for CRCs online as well that they can use to help run meetings, facilitate meetings. But we're still in the early stages would be the best, easiest thing for me to say, Catherine, and we're assessing the needs um, going forward and seeing how many CRCs might sort of spring up out of, out of this event. So just to give you an idea, um, there was already an existing one over in um, sort of towards Yinar in the Latrobe City area. They've expanded their remit from the 2019 fire, so that was an existing one. Um, and in other areas, we're sort of having initial conversations about whether they think that would be good. And sometimes that's a new community group or it might be existing groups that want to have a focus on recovery and getting ready for the next flood, storm or fire and what might be needed in their community. Thanks, Kate. Um, yeah, my understanding was that some councils actually have incorporated the CRC into their governance structure in some way. People are actually elected from the community into the CRC in some way. Is that right? It actually can happen in whatever way it works for the community. Right. So it, <laughs> and yet some, some um, CRCs are become incorporated, some right. self-elect and, you know, um, spontaneously come together over specific issues or, or priorities that they're concerned about. So there's no rules um, except for what community actually wants and what right. works for them. Thank you. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, we're coming to the, the final stages of our, of our meeting. There's still opportunity if you have any questions. Last questions can be asked at this stage. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free. There's, there's a moment. And, of course, uh, looking into the chat there, Cass has been very busy from BRV. Uh, just saying that uh, if we didn't get to your questions tonight, um, there will be a response in the coming days and you can stay up to date with information and storm on the website. So it's all there in the chat. Make sure you do stay connected um, through that. There's a lot of support there um, you can throw through email and so forth. And, of course, you've got some um, direct contacts with people, key people here tonight. Steve, I think if people send those questions to the email address in the attached, I th it'd be useful for us if you're happy for that question and answer to be shared broadly or whether it's specific to your own personal confidential needs, it'd just be good to know and we won't share that yeah. out further. But, you know, issues that are common across a whole bunch of community members or residents, we will publish. But if it's a confidential issue relating to just you and your your household, we won't be putting that out to the public. But just if, if you wouldn't mind just letting us know when you do send those questions mm -hmm. in. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Kane. Um, all right. Um, we really just, you know, we've done such an amazing... Uh, I think Marcus uh, has his hand up. Sorry, Steve. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, go for it, Marcus. Sorry. Um, I just want to follow on from Melanie's comments um, regarding Vinja um, during the, During the flood, certainly um, Gail, myself and Gary, who are councillors in this area... Certainly went out to meal nights, you know, from Woodside to Benjamin to Devon North. But there was a real consistency in, um, with the meals, and that was a lady called Kathy Cook. And I'd really like to, to just really acknowledge her work as a volunteer hero in this area. You know, she spent night after night uh, helping, you know, bring meals to the area and, and supporting in, uh, those different uh, areas and, of our community. And I'd really like to formally acknowledge that here in this forum that... Uh, Without people like Kathy Cook, you know, this community would not be the same and it's very supportive. And, and you know, the night we went to uh, Binjam Worry, you could see the difference of the community where, like, they're five, you know, five generations and they just got together and, 
mm. and did things and got it done. And uh, as a community, we have certainly went through a lot of um, angst and, and, and a lot of people were unhappy and angry, but um, you know, people like Kathy Cook really are the, are the heroes of our volunteers and Kathy, well done. Thank you. Good on you, councillor. And you're right, these are unsung people because often they certainly don't blow their own trumpet. So it's really great to, to get mentioned. Good on you, Kathy. Good to thank, see you. Thank, thank you, Marcus. I do appreciate that. Um, but it, it certainly was not just me. <laughs> You know, I've got a, a very good team of helpers from the neighbourhood house. And in this particular instance, the scout group helped me out heaps as well. So it certainly wasn't just me. Um, and, uh, you know, but I do appreciate it. Please, please pass it on for us then. I will. I do. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Any last minute comments like those gem, that gem from Marcus? Anything like that? Uh, amazing stories that we haven't yet heard. Okay, well let's uh, let's give ourselves a little uh, collective pat on the back because there was some fantastic sharing there. Really great, um, uh, yeah, insights, some really great problem solving in that, and a, a sense that there are things going to be followed up very quickly. So big thanks to all the people who contributed today. Big thanks to BRV in particular for kind of helping pull all the, the threads together from the different agencies, a particular thanks obviously to um, all the people from the Wellington Shire Council who are, who are here and have been working pretty tirelessly since June the 9th to make sure that um, the community is taken care of. It's proofs in the pudding. You've got a community who's turned up today and uh, they've said some pretty good things um, about that support. So well done, everyone. Um, Great night, and um, please again just make sure you do visit council's websites uh, website for updates uh, and any unanswered questions. Go to those um, inquiries at wellington.big.gov.au um, or visit the website for those updates. And um, yes, Kathy. Sorry, just one more thing. I, I would actually like to say that um, uh, we have a network group of neighbourhood houses, and our network spans five different LVAs um, and those in Wellington are really happy to be in Wellington. I think it's worth mentioning that our Shire really does stand up and do a great job. Um, and when I talk about things that the Shire has done or have said or have suggested or the support they've given us compared to some of the other Shires in our network, there are some very jealous neighbourhood houses out there. So I think it is <laughs> important to note that our, our Shire is, um, is right up there with their support and they've mm -hmm. done a great job. And um, I know at the start of the, when, when, when this June uh, event happened, people, some people were saying, you know, the Shire should be here, but the, uh, the risk for, pe for getting people to Yarram was very high in that, first instance um, and but they were still on the phone and they were asking questions and and they did have a presence even though they weren't here in person um, and the other thing I got a nudge from my family that I didn't thank them because they were <laughs> <be> helpful so <laughs> my ever supportive family so. No, that's so true but, Kathy yeah <laughs> that's true but, but the Shire certainly should be congratulated they they have been doing a great job Good on you, Kathy. I'm going to go to Catherine next because it might be good to close from you, uh, Mayor, if you like. Um, Catherine, what would you like? Oh, yeah, I skipped the Mayor. Um, so I just, and I know this is something that the emergency, so I don't belong to the emergency management team, but I think from just to give the community a sense of an, a, what's happening behind closed doors at council, we are thinking um, a lot around what recovery looks like, not just for the um, the um this storm recovery, but also broadly the COVID recovery and bushfire recovery. And we know that particularly in, in um, remote towns, the impact has been huge, especially around social connection and community participation. But I just, and this is kind of a bit, um, a bit of a plug for Carmel, what she was saying around those communities. Um, the, the information we get from community is really going to inform how we prepare and how we respond for next time. So 
all this sort of feedback is super helpful because it helps us to with well hang on a minute they said this to us but then we can then think long term around preparing you to you know to minimize future impacts and I think that's something that mm. we forget because we might you know this one regards a storm recovery but fundamentally at the end of the day it is around that getting back up and moving forward regardless of the event so have a think about that too and let us know because we we are we have access to other types of funding community grants type of funding and we just need to know from the community what's the best way to support you with that recovery effort so that's something else um mm. if you can put your thinking caps on and let us know good on you thanks Catherine another plug too for the CRC is in terms of the function that it, it might have so um just before I go finally to uh, the mayor, I'd just like to, again, thank all those agencies, a lot of them who have not spoken tonight, but have been prepared to, to come out and just be available for any questions that might have um, been relevant to them. Uh, thank you very much for that. It's much appreciated. Over to you, uh, Gary, to, to close. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I'd just, I'd just firstly just like to thank you very much for the job you've done as facilitator. Thank I think you. it's been an excellent job and uh, well yeah. done and you, I've, I've just and the, the manner in which you've done it's been outstanding so thank you very much for doing That's that very kind Good job and uh great work and just thanks to carmel and kane and the uh people from brv and all the other agencies um again to our uh, shire staff for all the great work they do and um uh, all the people that said kind words about the wellington shire i've noted your names and your checks will be in the mail <laughs> so uh, so um and i didn't and I didn't set any of them up to say nice things about it, about the Shire. So it's really nice to hear positive feedback. So that's great. Um, and yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for their participation. Just back to you, Steve. Thanks so much. And look, I'd just like to say that was very kind of you. It's definitely a team effort. Um, people like uh, Kane, Cass and, and Carmel from BRV certainly made my job very easy. So um, it's great, just great to be part of this uh, you know, community event, just to see the total teamwork of all the people working together. So um, yeah, great night out and um, thank you all. Excellent. Thanks everybody. Thanks you. Good night. See you. Good night.